So let's go out to Senator Tom Cotton, who's been calling for a harder approach to the approach to Iran directly. Uh, let's go out to the senator. Senator, I was happy to see that hit on Thursday, but the militias, the Iranian-backed militias responded again on Friday. What should be our response now? Yeah, Brian, I guess it's better than nothing, but it's not much better than nothing. Look, Iran has developed a strategy for 30 years to use proxies to attack America and our allies to deny responsibility. Um, when they've attacked us now close to a couple dozen times, and all we've done is struck their proxies' warehouses, unoccupied warehouses at that, all we do is validate Iran, Iran's strategy. What we need to do is send a clear and forceful message, whether it's striking their Revolutionary Guard Corps officials in Syria or in Iraq, or striking directly at Iranian facilities and sites in Iran to make it clear that we will not tolerate attacks on Americans throughout the region by Iranian proxies. We will not allow them to hide behind their own cat's paw. That's exactly what Donald Trump did in January of 2020 when he killed their terror mastermind, uh, Qasem Soleimani, in Iraq. If we don't do something like that, as we saw yesterday, these attacks are going to continue until Americans are killed. But instead, we get statements from the White House that says this is not related to Israel. We're not looking for a confrontation with Iran. We're not looking for a confrontation with China. Both are true. But guess what? They're the provocative ones. And, you know, it's very similar. General Keene had a similar idea on how to really send a message to Iran. He said, direct and coordinate funds that support all this activity, find out who is supporting the IRGC, and suffocate them. Then get a comprehensive plan to stop the Iranians by actually slamming into their headquarters and may possibly taking out some of their oil refineries. I mean, would that be something they, they would understand? It's going to take something like that, I'm afraid, Brian, to make Iran pull in its horns. It's exactly, for instance, what Ronald Reagan did in Libya in 1986 after Libyan-backed terrorists blew up a nightclub in Berlin that American GIs frequented. It's exactly what Ronald Reagan did in 1988 in the tanker wars when he warned Iran not to mine the Persian Gulf. They did. It hit a U.S. Navy vessel. We sank half of Iran's Navy. The, the president is so scared of his own shadow when it comes to escalation, as we've seen in Ukraine and we're now seeing in the right. Middle East. All it does is invite more escalation. What's called for here is escalation dominance. I, I frankly think that Sean Connery's character from The Untouchables, Jimmy Malone, understood how to survive in the Middle East better than Joe Biden does. When he told Kevin Costner's character, Elliot Ness, they send one of ours to the hospital, we send one of theirs to the morgue. That's what it takes to survive in the Middle East. And that would, that's how you avoid a major war, by showing strength that you're willing to fight it. Our military presence, 13,000 in Kuwait, Qatar 8 to 10,000, Bahrain 7,000, Jordan over 3,000, Saudi Arabia 2,700, in Iraq 2,500, Iran and Syria 900. We're vulnerable there, and we owe it to the men and women who signed up to fight to do everything we can to keep them safe. They know it's going to be tough in a war zone. It doesn't have to be extra tough. And uh, also, I got to add this. The Washington Post is reporting that the Biden administration is urging Israel to rethink its plans on a major ground offensive. So whatever they're saying publicly, they're saying rethink about going all in on Gaza. We opened the show, Senator Cotton, by talking about a new phase to the war with the prime minister of Israel making that call. What could you tell us is really going on behind the scenes? Well, unfortunately, Brian, I think you've got that right. President Biden ha has been somewhat maximalist on his rhetoric, but the administration continues behind the scenes to sound notes of caution and restraint and proportionality. Even publicly, they sound those no notes and they frequently lecture and patronize the government of Israel uh, about minimizing civilian casualties. Brian, the Israeli Defense Forces never would target civilians intentionally, but when Hamas is operating command centers and arms depots and other valid military targets from hospitals and schools and neighborhoods, Israel can strike those legitimate targets. The American people wouldn't have stood for someone else calling for restraint and caution in September of, of 2001. They certainly wouldn't have demanded, allowed us to provide aid to Afghans while the Taliban still govern there. And, and Brian, we didn't sound those notes in Dresden and Tokyo in the spring of 1945. We shouldn't expect the government of Israel to take any such actions after the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. We should back them to the hilt, 
publicly right. and privately. Senator, I, I wish you'd get into the White House, tell them you'd like to talk to them and express that uh, and tell them you'd have their back if they did so. Uh, Senator Tom Cotton, thanks so much.